This is the brand new M4 Max MacBook Pro 16. And if you're holding a M1 Max and you feel like you need to upgrade or anything earlier, this is the one to get because performance on this is absolutely insane. And even though on paper, it still shares the exact same amount of CPU cores and GPU cores as the previous M3 Max, the performance is still significantly better, especially when it comes to the GPU. On top of all this, they increase the memory bandwidth from 400 gigabytes a second to 546. And this makes a difference in certain applications. Now design wise, it's exactly the same. Like they didn't really change anything. You can still buy it in a space gray and a silver color if you really want to. The port lineup is also identical. For example, you have your MagSafe connector. Uh, fun fact, it does not come with stickers anymore in the box. They got rid of that. But if you buy the nano textured version of the MacBook Pro, you do get a polishing cloth. You also have a combo audio jack. And then on the other side, you have an HDMI port, which, which can support a 4K 240 Hertz display and SD card. Now these type C ports are no longer Thunderbolt 4. They've now been upgraded to Thunderbolt 5. So what does this mean for you who's buying this laptop? Well, unfortunately you still can't hook up an external GPU. That'd be really cool to test out. But the bandwidth has been increased. Most of the time you're gonna see 80 gigabits per second. This is if it's transferring up and down at the exact same time. With Thunderbolt 4, that used to be 40 gigabits per second. But Thunderbolt 5 also introduces a bandwidth boost, meaning it can go up to 120 gigabits per second for video related content. So you can have more monitors connected to this, higher resolution monitors connected to this, which you couldn't do before. Like you can hook up three 6K 60 Hertz displays at the exact same time. Also, the weight on the new M4 Max version of the MacBook Pro 16 has been slightly reduced. And I mean, to the point where you're not gonna feel it. So for example, this now weighs 4.7 pounds instead of 4.8. Now display wise, it's still using a mini LED display with ProMotion, which is 120 Hertz. The big difference this year is you can now buy it with a nano texture. So this is the nano texture version that I have. And usually I was never a fan of the nano texture on a monitor because I feel like with monitors, you're buying them for your studio, you can control the light that comes in. You can control the reflections that you see on the display. And I'd rather have the higher contrast that a glossy glass panel provides than a nano textured one. But for laptops, it absolutely makes sense. Like I travel a lot. I'm in different lighting situations, which I cannot control. And I always see reflection on the display and it drives me crazy. This significantly reduces it and it makes a big difference. Now the display quality is identical to before. Like you still have pretty much the same color gamut and color accuracy with a 120 Hertz display. But what has changed are the peak brightness numbers. So for example, they both can do 1600 nits in HDR mode. They usually stay around 600 nits in SDR mode if you're indoors. But if you go outside, this new version can reach 1000 nits in SDR mode. The other thing that's changed is the webcam. On the previous version, it was just a 1080p webcam. We're now rocking a 12 megapixel center stage webcam. So the camera will follow you around, always keeping you in frame. All right, so right now you're looking at the webcams on the MacBook Pro 16 M3 Max and M4 Max. This is the M4 Max. It's using a new 12 megapixel center stage camera. I'm wondering if the improvement in the actual video production is better. I mean, it's hard to tell, but it does look a little bit better on the new MacBook Pro 16. You guys let me know what you think. And more importantly, how do the microphones sound? Has there been any change in the audio quality? The speakers are the same, so there's nothing to talk about there, but what has changed is the performance. This is where things are incredible. If you're buying the M4 Max of the MacBook Pro 14 or 16, you're gonna love it. First of all, this has the fastest single core clock speeds I have ever seen on a laptop. 174 for the M4 Pro and 169 for the M4 Max. A 20% increase over the M3 Max and a 30% increase over the M2 Max. As for multi-core speeds, this scored 1991, and that's not the year I was born, I promise you that. But I did see an 18% increase in multi-core speeds over the M3 Max. In fact, the M3 Max and the M4 Pro and the Mac Mini are pretty much tied in terms of CPU performance, 
which leads me to believe that the M4 Pro is going to be the chip to get this year. As for Mozilla Firefox, everything was pretty much equal. I think Mozilla Firefox is starting to bottleneck in terms of how fast it can be compiled. I didn't see much of a difference between the M3 Max and the M4 Pro. Each of these devices were within a minute of each other. Now the M4 Max also set a new record for Puget Bench Photoshop, scoring 13,400 and 22. This is 30% faster than the M2 Ultra in the Mac Studio, 15% faster than the M3 Max, and 9% faster than the M4 Pro. Premiere Pro was a little bit different, and the only benchmark that the i9 14900HX with an RTX 4090 beat out all the MacBooks, but it still was 5% faster than the M2 Ultra, and about 12% faster than the M3 Max MacBook Pro 16. As for browser benchmarks, again, I think most laptops do this fast enough these days, but it's still fun to take a look at. The M4 Pro and M4 Max have the fastest web browsing score I've seen on a laptop, period. And that's most likely due to the faster single core clock speeds. Now, I don't use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit my videos. I use DaVinci Resolve. So I did a render test to see how fast it could render. And it beat out the M3 Max by about 30 seconds. The Mac Studio still does it the fastest. It just has double the GPU cores. So it did it significantly less. But the M4 Pro only having half the cores took a little bit longer, almost double the time. But the biggest performance update, at least to me, was the GPU performance. Like I ran Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is not optimized for Apple Silicon. It still runs through Rosetta and it almost performed just as well as the RTX 4080 inside of the ASUS ROG G16. Now I have to admit this RTX 4080 in the G16 is not a true RTX 4080 just because it's being starved a little bit of power. I just don't have RTX 4080 laptops in the studio. They're all 4090s and those perform significantly faster. But you can still do things like play Cyberpunk. Like I installed Crossover, ran Cyberpunk with settings set to high. I was able to obtain 45 frames per second. Like the game is totally playable, especially if you don't mind even dropping the settings a little bit more. Baldur's Gate, which averaged 75 frames per second on the M3 Max, now averages over 100 frames on the M4 Max. That's a 25 FPS increase compared to the previous generation. Like 25 FPS is a lot. It's like going from one GPU to a higher end GPU. And for whatever reason, if you're into ray tracing and games with ray tracing, I tested out Myst, which is an older title. I know it's very easy to run, but the settings were set to Epic. Ray tracing on, field of view to 120, and I was able to maintain 120 frames per second, taking advantage of that 120 hertz display. The game looked good and it ran well. Now, obviously I can't not do this video without testing World of Warcraft, and I literally cranked everything up to its max, like all the way up. And this was able to maintain over 100 frames per second. Like World of Warcraft running on this laptop looked absolutely beautiful and it ran extremely well. Now I'm not saying you should buy an M4 Max for gaming, like that would just be insane like you could buy a lot cheaper pc computers to play games and have access to a bigger library the point of showing gaming on a mac is for those of you out there that buy this for work but also like to game on the side you have that opportunity now it's just you have to understand that the library is still significantly smaller i should also mention that all these tests were done on high power mode. So you have the option when it's plugged in to crank up the fans so that they're a bit louder to push the performance as fast as it can go. And fan noise can get loud on the MacBook. Like whenever I was gaming, the fans would crank up to about 58 decibels. Now, if you do leave it on automatic, the fans won't get that loud. They'll probably hover in the mid forties. But most of the time, if you're not gaming, you're never going to hear the fans kick on. But battery life is what impressed me the most. Now, Apple is advertising two hours extra of battery life on the MacBook Pro 14 and 16. It's hard for me to like internalize that because their tests are just basically Wi-Fi rundowns. But I have been using this off battery throughout the day over the course of the week. And I do notice a difference. Like before I could like crank out a video in eight hours and have almost no battery life left. This, I feel like I'm getting an extra one hour, an hour and a half of use before needing to charge. So here's the bottom line. This is a massive performance upgrade. And the best part about all of this is you can do it without the computer being plugged in. Like you'll still get pretty much the exact same performance, which is something you can't do on the bigger, thicker PC laptops that I usually test alongside this. 
If you're looking at the MacBook Pro 14 or 16, I honestly feel like the M4 Pro is the one to get. I feel like you're gonna get the most bang for your buck. But if you're looking at the M4 Max, I probably don't need to recommend it to you. You're probably someone who's in an industry where you're willing to show up that kind of money to get every single performance gain you can get from a MacBook Pro. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I will be releasing my video on the Mac Mini tomorrow, so make sure to get subscribed for that. Like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.